It has been another hot minute since I've done a video. What's going on, fish folk? Austin here with Fantastic Freaks. So despite the absence, it hasn't been too long ago since I made a fish room tour video, but even since then, a lot of things have been changing down here. So in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and get you caught up on what's all going on down here in the fish room and uh, got a lot of cool things here to show you. First and foremost, we have the 30 gallon hex here finally stocked up with plants as well as fish. You can see a big school of them over there. Actually, you can see all the inhabitants right there, which consists of 10 cardinal tetras and a koi beta. Of all the tetras that are out there in the hobby, cardinal tetras are probably one of the most recognized. And if you didn't already know, you can see why. Just that blue and red color is just absolutely amazing. If you've been in the fish keeping hobby for a while, these probably don't need much of an introduction as you probably already know just how amazing and cool these guys look in a group and such. Especially when you got a column tank like such where they can just swim around and school together. It is truly a beautiful sight to just watch and behold. Speaking of beautiful things to look at, check this guy out. This is a male koi beta and just that mostly red with some black and just clear fins with those blue dots on him. He is just something beautiful and really complements those cardinal tetras well. So this koi beta is number four in terms of beta fish in my fish room. I don't have a name for this guy yet. We're gonna have to fix that though soon. If you got a name suggestion for this guy, go ahead and let me hear what it is in the comments below. Honestly, this tank might be quickly growing into one of my top three favorite tanks in here. Uh, just uh, all sorts of plants in here. We got various vowels. Uh, got some Italian vowel, uh, some giant vowel. Got some corkscrew vowel that's trying to make a comeback here. As you can see, there's a lot of dead leaves here on uh, laying on the substrate, which is play sand, by the way. This 50 pound bag was like just barely over $3, which, you know, getting 50 pounds of sand at a pet store, you could easily pay like $60 depending on where you live and such. As you can see, the plants in here for the most part are doing pretty good. Had some corkscrew valves that kinda went down at first. Uh, otherwise, they're starting to make a comeback, partially because I've been putting some Flourish Advance in there before I got all the fish here. And uh, that's part of the reason why I think they're making a good comeback. And uh, that Flourish Advance has really benefited my water sprites here as well. As I said, we're going to have to find a name for that fourth beta in that tank back there, as my other three have uh, names. But speaking of naming fish, we got a name for the Flowerhorn Parrot. Well, ladies and gentlemen, fish folk alike, say hello to Starlight, my Flowerhorn Parrot. Hello! Sadly, I can't remember right off the top of my head which one of you uh, came up with the name idea, but... Uh, just looking at the little blue dots that this guy has, kind of like my uh, Koi Beta really now. Uh, just all those blue dots and such. Starlight just seemed like a very fitting name, although there are plenty of other good ones as uh, I believe this other one, uh, King's Aquariums or Aquatics, I'm sorry if I always mix that up, but uh, came up with a name like Steve since my first name is Austin, thus, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin, which Definitely that one is probably one of the very many honorable mentions that I gotta give. Uh, gotta remember that for a fish down the road for sure. By now perhaps you've realized Starlight is not in uh, his normal tank. He's in the uh, 29 with a divider of course with my African Jewel Cichlid Juliet here. Uh, why is this so, huh? The original tank for Starlight is a 40 gallon breeder. I usually change about a third of the water of the tank about every week and a half or so. Right after I got done doing the water change, putting the chlorinators and all the stuff I typically do with my tanks after I do a water change, Starlight just was not looking so good, starting to surf on uh, his side and uh, quickly needed to take action as things were not looking good. Long story much shorter, I might have jumped the gun and did a water change in Starlight's tank just a little early, thus threw off its water parameters. Fortunately, I was able to go with a plan B here as I had a divider, which I could have put this in the 55 and would have worked as well, but since the pH is a little different in that 40 breeder over there to what Starlight was used to compared to this 29, the 29 just seemed as a better solution. But after a few days to a week, it's time of getting things back to control, as well as battling some hair algae in the process, 
things in here are getting back under control and back to where they should be, so Starlight should be able to return home quite soon. Things continue to trend more and more in a positive direction in that tank each day. Hopefully it'll continue to trend that way. So behind me, the 125, you can already see we got some things added to the aquascape, but before I go into detail on that, as well as a new fish that I have now in there, I wanted to go ahead and show you the newest tank that I got in here. Um, got it from a friend who said they believe it's a 50 gallon tank, which it looks like it's about that size. It's been used, so need some cleaning, just basically that, some cleaning, some TLC, and she'll be ready to go just like any other tank that I've bought used in the past. Got an idea for what I might be putting in here, maybe two even, but uh, that would be telling. We'll talk more about that tank in a upcoming video here, but uh, in the meantime, let's check out this 120 and what's new over here. So to those of you that don't already know, this is my 125 gallon goldfish tank where it consists of six Comet goldfish, three various types of fantail goldies, as well as three dojo loaches, as well as a new fish though now has joined the crowd. I'll get on him in just a minute. But in the meantime, as you can see, got some uh, fake plants in here. This is just a fake planted tank number three. Gotta tell you, I think it's added a little bit of a touch to this aquascape here. A uh, nice touch on top of that. I think it's added a nice little accent to it and is kind of helps the goldfish's colors pop too, if you ask me. There are still some real plants in here though, as uh, plants and uh, vegetables in general are considered a normal part of a goldfish's diet. So don't want to deprive that of them. I also got some duckweed in a few of my tanks here that I just put on the surface for them. And uh, especially my Comet Goldfish and really my Fantails too just love that. It's like ice cream to them. As I've said a couple times though now, this 125 here has a new fish in it. A Pleco has entered the building. Say hello to Pongo, the Gold Nugget Pleco. I remember when I first got him, the walls of the tank, the filter, some of the decor in here, like the dragons or those rock caves, had a good deal of algae on them. And uh, by the time this video publishes, I'll have had Pongo for about a couple weeks now at this point. And as you can see, uh, get a little closer on the dragon here, and it's a lot different story now. They're much cleaner and... Uh, He's got this tank looking pretty good thanks to his uh, algae eating abilities. <laughs> Outside of eating algae and such off the filters and the decor and such, I also feed him some algae pellets uh, as well as some shrimp pellets. Occasionally I make sure that he gets some blood worms down to the surface for him. He's also been willing to eat some of the leftovers such as the flakes and pellets that the Goldies miss. So he hasn't been too picky of an eater thus far. Currently right now I'd say he's about three or so inches. But before he's done growing, he can reach anywhere between 8 to more like 10 inches before his growth spurt is all said and done. Which uh, will be just fine inside this 125. And just look at the color on him. Just the yellow in his fins, the yellow dots on his body. Is that not beautiful or what? Just what a beautiful fish. Not too far away from the goldfish tank is Finley's tank. So he's been swimming all around here and doing happy dances and such trying to get my attention. Yeah, how you doing, Finley? How you doing, buddy? He's easily six inches now, by the way. If you like this update video, fish folk, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. If you got an idea for that 50 gallon tank that I showed you earlier, go ahead and leave the suggestions in the comments below. And if you like what I do on this channel overall, fish folk, consider subscribing to my channel to stay in the loop with fish room updates like this, fish room tours in the future, fish store tours, all sorts of things down the road. And if my updates on YouTube aren't enough, follow me on Instagram at that right up there. Until next time, fish folk, stay fantastic.